When you look at all the ice across the entire globe, the single largest source of sea level rise is the Greenland ice sheet. And in fact, since the 1990s, Greenland has contributed over 14 millimetres to sea level rise. It's contributed this in two main ways. The first is through melt, like an ice cube would melt, and the second is through discharge, which is the loss of ice to the ocean through the carving of icebergs. Where the Greenland ice sheet speeds up, it begins to crack open, and these cracks we call crevasses. Now, in the 21st century, as the ice sheet accelerates, we would expect to see more crevasses and deeper crevasses. So our research aimed to look at where these crevasses were and how they were changing in the 21st century. We looked at 3D surface maps called digital elevation models made from high resolution satellite imagery. And we used these to map crevasses across the ice sheet in 2016 and 2021. Our objective was to map where these crevasses were and how they were changing across the ice sheet in the 21st century. For the past few decades, we've had very high resolution optical satellite imagery of the entire globe, including the polar regions. We can convert these images into very high resolution surface topographic maps, which we call digital elevation models or DEMs. Uh, the US Polar Geospatial Center has a big collection of these called the Arctic DEM. We analyzed thousands of Arctic DEM strips over the five year period to see how crevasses were changing. Where the ice sheet has been accelerating, we are seeing more and we are seeing deeper crevasses. And this is especially true in the areas of the ice sheet that are exposed to the ocean and that have seen significant warming from the ocean since the 1990s. In these sets of the ice sheet, we're seeing up to a 25% increase in crevasse volume since 2016. Our research showed that crevasse volume had increased by 4% over the period, but in fact, this was within error. This was because increases across the ice sheet were balanced nearly entirely by a single glacier called Sermet Kujalek. This is the fastest flowing glacier on the planet. It reaches 50 metres a day, but between 2016 and 2018, we saw significant slowdown in this glacier. This slowdown and the closure of crevasses that it caused single-handedly outweighed the increase in crevasses across the rest of the ice sheet. But since 2018, we've seen this glacier return to accelerating and retreating, so we won't have this to balance out losses in the future. As crevasses grow, they drive the mechanisms that can make the ice sheet flow faster. So they can deliver water and energy to the interior of the ice sheet, and the cracks can damage and weaken the ice and cause ice to fall off into the ocean in carving events. So as we see crevasses increase across the ice sheet, we're worried that we can see mechanisms that cause further acceleration, more crevasses, and in effect, a runaway train effect that can cause more sea level rise in the future. Due to climate change, a lot of the future sea level rise from the ice sheets is already baked in. So even if we manage to stop all global warming tomorrow, we will still see maybe even up to a metre of sea level rise. If we continue along our current path and exceed two degrees centigrade of warming, we might see committed sea levels of 10 or even 20 metres of sea level rise from Greenland and Antarctica. We urgently need to try and keep our warming beneath 1.5 degrees centigrade so that we can give global communities the time to mitigate and adapt to sea level rise in the future.